Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Was Justice League's Fire Shadow. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So now let's start this video. The Justice League were currently working on dealing with a few new criminals who had decided to pop out of the proverbial woodwork, though there were thankfully not that many as of this time. That usually meant that some of the team members were going to get some time to unwind and relax a bit. One thing they began to agree on after the mess with the Manhunters and the recent mess with the Atlanteans, was that the need to rest was needed, since burning themselves out was not that good an option. Only marked exception among them in that train of thought was Batman himself, but he did not stop them if they needed to unwind. As of right now, Superman was pleased to finally get a chance to go out on a simple trip back home to meet his parents, adopted anyway, and relax alongside his cousin Carr. John had gone back to make the most of his time in his old hometown, Flash was back in his city to make sure to keep it safe, and also be with his folks. Sheer was one of the few who stayed on the watchtower to relax in her own way while John was on monitor duty. That however would have made one wonder what was going on with several other members of the League, namely a certain blonde shinobi, an Amazon princess, and of course a Tamaranian. If one went into the watchtower, one would get the answer fairly quick. In the watchtower's training gym. The gym basically was like any gym found anywhere on Earth's cities and towns, as well as the private kind. But in this case, the gym equipment here was all custom made and for a very good reason. When Bruce Wayne Batman had the watchtower made, it was made clear that astronauts would need a place to train and hone their bodies, and keep themselves physically fit for active duty. After the Imperium invasion and the speech of the general, and prior to introducing the watchtower to the others, he had secretly made custom-built gym equipment, and other times brought in, with the last bits in the watchtower, when he brought Clark and the others there. He believed that even with the presence of some of the League members having superhuman strength, Superman, Wonder Woman, John, and Cory among them, they still needed to keep themselves strong and ready for combat. Naruto personally liked the idea and recalled how as a kid of 12 to 13, he had trained himself in water walking one time by carrying at least 3 to 4 fully grown adult men on his back. When asked by Batman how he managed that since adult men would weigh a lot more than a 12 or 13 year old kid in that age, he decided to rip off just for the fun of it. That's a secret. Complete with hand gestures, smirk, and wink. Needless to say Batman glared, Superman gave a slight smile, John shook his head, John merely observed, Hot Girl was curious about that, Diana raised an eyebrow, Cory was smiling. And Flash. Laughing his ass off even if Batman was giving him the glare, as for Naruto, he was wearing his trademark fox grin the whole time. Whoever cooked up that line for that character was a genius. He just knew Batman was going to get him for that, but at the moment he did not mind in the slightest. He was actually looking forward to the idea of setting up a prank war with Batman. After all. The prankster from Kanoha had to keep in step right. His mother Kashina loved pranks so who was he to not take up the mantle. Speaking of Cory, she was currently doing something that was considered a part of her people's culture as an empathic, but warrior-born race. Sparring, and who was the set partner for said sparring for the orange-skinned, literally fiery-haired, and green-eyed beauty. Who else? Ha! Naruto dodged the incoming strike from Cory, as they were currently sparring with one another in one of the gyms in the watchtower. The two had been there to get some exercise until the blonde asked the Tamaranian for a spar to see how her combat skills were coming along. She was more than willing to oblige though he made sure to see her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, and not her energy powers or flight, there was plenty of time for that sort of thing later. And so far he was not disappointed yet as her speed and power were not to be laughed at, and while she was holding back like he was, she was no slouch when it came to hitting hard. She apparently was well skilled in the combat arts as he was currently on the defensive, not something he usually took part in. He moved to block another punch from her which was followed by a kick to his side, but he quickly dodged the kick and fired one of his own, hitting Cory and forcing her backwards. The Tamaranian smiled a bit and quickly engaged the blonde ninja once more, while Naruto smirked at her in reply as he began to block her attacks. After dodging several precise kicks and punches from the woman, Naruto moved on the offensive. He leaped over Cory and then spun in mid-flight to land a powerful kick to her side. Cory managed to block the attack, only for Naruto to use his other leg to hit her from the side, and as soon as he landed on the ground on his hands. He used his hands to springboard himself forward and land a drop kick of his own into Cory's chest. Move. Cory backed back from the blow, but recovered enough to block some of Naruto's punches as he came at her, not relenting in his assault, and soon he hit her with a shoulder charge to get some room. Cory grunted at that but was not disappointed or angry as she admired her friend's persistence and determination in this fight, even if it was a spar between the two of them. She managed to avoid his next blow and land a haymaker of a punch on him, though that set punch was very low powered. 
Naruto grunted from the blow and felt his ribs cry in pain, but he did not let that stop him either as he quickly grabbed Kori's extended arm and caught her in a throw, and as she was sent down to land on the mat, he quickly released her and got some distance between the two of them. That move turned out to be the right move on his part as she got up with a flip and then charged with a knee strike aimed at his chest, which she blocked before using her extended leg as a springboard to flip over her, twist in mid-flip, and then spinning his body to fire out a kick to her head. The kick that she was able to block and catch the leg and begin to spin the blonde around in a circle already the move was really having an effect on the blonde, but it was not going to be idle, as he quickly moved forward and attacked even if in such a bad situation. This was naturally part of the training back in the academy, as long as you had your other limbs and the will, strength, and stamina, you were not out of the fight yet. He moved quickly and managed to force Cory to release him, as he aimed a punch and elbow strike with his left hand for the fist and the right elbow for the strike. This forced Cory to release his leg which was an opening that Naruto wasted no time to use, as he landed a kick with his other leg to hit Cory, and that gave Naruto a chance to get to his feet as Cory did the same. The two looked at one another for a bit longer, tense and ready for a fight. Until they smiled at one another, they had agreed to have the spar last for 5 minutes, and now that they had reached the limit, it was time to stop. Not that neither of them were disappointed for not winning the spar between them. As they relaxed, they soon heard clapping nearby, and turned to see none other than Diana herself. That was impressive Hokage, Starfire. Diana's praise was not false in any stretch of the imagination as she had arrived much earlier, and had decided to observe the two spar with one another. She had noted that Naruto's style was flexible, unpredictable, but highly effective and also precise. When he attacked Kori in the spar, the fight lasted for a bit, and there was no doubt in her warrior's eye that Naruto was no slouch in fighting powerful foes. Both Kori and Naruto smiled, and the blonde showed the traditional sign of respect between ninja students, and since Kori had been told by the blonde what the gesture meant, she did likewise, and when it was over she spoke to him. That was a really good spar friend Hokage. Thanks, you are no slouch yourself Kori-chan, I take it this kind of thing is common for you. Kori smiled and nodded. Yes. I was trained well back home, it's common on Tamron for us to learn how to fight to defend ourselves. Kori's smile did not hide any sadness, not because she had forgotten her homeworld, but because she knew that as long as she was not seen and caught by the citadel, her people would not be attacked and harmed, thus as long as they were alright, then she would be alright. And the fact that she had found good friends here on earth made the separation much easier to bear, along with being close to friend Naruto, the very first person she had become close to ever since her escape. Naruto smiled at that and knew that at least Kori's spirits were good, and he had no plans to let anything take away her smile and her spark. Even though it was a constant struggle for him not to do anything towards Kori, even though it was obvious that Kori was not against doing anything with him right now. Good to know, and I have to admit that if you were able to come to my own world before, you would have become quite famous as a Kanoichi Kori-chan. Kori smiled warmly at the praise coming from her first friend on Earth itself, and Diana could see that Naruto himself was a good friend to Kori. The young princess had taken to being part of the League well enough, and despite her being naive in the culture on Earth had proven that her heart was in the right place, and in hindsight, reminded the Amazon of herself on occasion, and also reminded her of Donna her very own sister. I also would agree Cory, you have amazing combat skill, and with more time and experience, you can truly make a difference alongside your powers. Cory nodded and Naruto smiled at the fact that Diana and Cory got along rather well. He however had to admit seeing both beautiful women in their respective uniforms, and chatting like that, gave some very interesting images to him. He managed to place those thoughts aside, since the last thing he wanted was for any of them to catch him having less than impure thoughts, even if he was a shameless pervert on occasion. The reason was that while well, he had a feeling that Cory did not mind and in fact would revel in that due to her culture, nature, and habits, Diana, despite being on good terms with him, would murder his ass if she found out just where his thoughts were going. Diana soon faced him and smiled her approval of his performance. And you are very well skilled Hokage, the style you used was highly flexible and unpredictable. Plus you seem to find ways to attack Cory in the most unexpected and acrobatic ways. Naruto smiled and accepted the praise, coming from Diana who was the princess of a nation of nine immortal warrior women who had more time than he did to learn how to fight, that was a lot. Yeah, well, I always try to keep myself in top form, even if I happen to be a lot older than most guys my physical age might suggest. At any rate, it's kind of nice to be able to spar with someone who can give me a challenge. Oh? Yeah not that I wanted or anything, but the vast majority of the criminals I have to deal with in LA, guns and weapons aside, don't strike me as being that big a threat. I mean take away the guns and have them land in my world, they'd be in for a world of hurt. The criminal ninja back home were a lot more dangerous than them, and I honestly wish I took the chance to spar with Superman. Diana smirked a bit at that and spoke again. You would spar with Superman? Yeah I would, he's not as refined in the martial arts, but that can be remedied with some extra training time. 
I miss him though, the Cory Chan really made me work for it there, so I am happy to bleed out the boredom, plus I am going to teach her some of the taijutsu skills I picked up. Not really my chosen skill set and all that, but I am good at it. I can see that so why don't I propose a match? Oh, who am I to spar with? He just had to ask her. Later. Me and my big mouth. No kidding, but then again, they don't seem to mind. The reason for Naruto to have that sad thought run through his brain, along with the sarcastic comment from Kurama. He was now being tag teamed by both Diana and Cory as the Amazon, and the Tamaranian decided to test Naruto's combat skills against two powerful female fighters, with the condition that if he could hit either of them hard enough to cause an injury, then the match was over with him as the victor. And if he got injured by either of them hard enough to stop his offensive, but not seriously harm him, then they would be the winners. And right now they were really giving him a run for his money, as both were not going to let him get away that easily. It was hardly with any malice though since they were pretty much eager to test themselves against Naruto, who had proven thus far to be someone who could be a test for them both. So right now, the blonde former Hokage was being attacked by the two women who were really cutting loose in the fight, but not enough to send him to hospital, thankfully. He dodged a powerful punch and elbow strike combination from Diana, and then blocked a powerful sidekick from Cory, who followed up with a knee strike of her own, forcing him to counter with his own leg to block the attack and move it aside. He had little time to relax as he flipped backwards and managed to land on his feet, and then rolled to the side when Diana came in with a powerful bone-crushing heel kick. The metal where he'd been standing on before was now crushed. Diana grunted a bit in missing her target, but that hardly meant she was done as she quickly turned to him, and fired a two-punch combination which she blocked, and she soon followed that with a spinning kick that forced him to duck, and then block another kick from Cory, who was now throwing punches at him and followed by what appeared to be a drop kick from one of those wrestling shows he and Cory had seen by accident. He managed to counter the blows and move back and then thought to himself. Not exactly what I had in mind, but this is really getting rid of the boredom. The two women were soon ready to engage him again, and he was also more than ready for the coming attacks, though he had to admit that whoever was bankrolling the watchtower was going to have a hessy fit if the damage to the gym was any indication. One thing was for sure, sparring with Coriander and Diana at the same time was pretty darn exhilarating. The implications of his own statement plus the images it sent into him quickly made him wish that he had not thought it up. Thank the Kami neither of them were telepathic otherwise they would have been able to pick up on the thoughts in his head. And usually would have been one hell of a mess on his part, since he would have to convince the two that he had no ungentlemanly ideas towards them. Kurama on the other hand was more than willing to take advantage of the situation he was in for the sake of humor. And how was he going to take advantage of the whole thing one might ask, simply put, he began to send images into Naruto's mind which showed him fighting the Amazon and Tamaranian, only this time. They were very much bare of any clothing the very same images that had briefly been in his partner's head. Ukinki, being tag teamed by two gorgeous women who can knock your block off literally in the nude. Ha, you're a real piece of work Naruto. No thanks to you, furball. Knock it off, I do not need those images in my head right now. Sorry, having ate too much for no, duck. Naruto did just that to avoid a hell of a kick directed at his head by Diana, and while he did evade the blow, the way he moved back and the fact that Diana was still kicking at him, he got an interesting look at the raven-haired and blue-eyed beauty in that angle. Only adding to his flustered state. A state further increased when Cory came at him with a shoulder charge that he barely flipped over, and when she turned to be ready for his landing, he got a very interesting view from above, as he was at the apex of his flip over the Tamaranian. Naruto mentally got his head back in the match and out of the gutter, as he was soon blocking a fist from Cory and another kick from Diana at the same time. He quickly pushed their attacks aside, and quickly launched a combined attack of his own this time around. The blonde finally decided to use some of his chakra to help him increase his durability a bit more, before he would use his abilities to engage in close combat again with the two females, who were really making things difficult for him. He personally did not want to resort to using his chakra in a spar, but if there was one thing he learned in his years as Hokage, it was that fighting fair was a foreign concept to ninja, and if needed, he would have to fight dirty to win. He knew that this was a bit overkill, but if this kept up, he was going to have to go all out anyway. The fact that Diana decided to amp things up with her asking him to use his chakra in the match, made this a lot easier. Hokage, use your chakra in this fight, I want to see how you use it. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that while blocking a punch from Diana, while Cory moved in to attack with a kick of her own, to which Naruto flipped backward to avoid the attack. Normally Diana would have preferred to fight Naruto one on one from the beginning, but she wanted to give the blonde a challenge since he wanted one, plus she liked Cory as a friend and ally, so this did not bother her. However she decided that next time it would be just her and Naruto in a spar. Naruto did not know what was going on in the mind of the raven-haired warrior princess, and spoke to her. You want me to use my chakra in this spar? Of course, besides, Batman stated that the room is reinforced along with whatever equipment is here right now. Go all out for now Hokage, I want to see you show your power. Cory was more than willing to support the idea as she spoke to Naruto. 
Yes, friend Naruto, we can handle it. Naruto could tell that both Diana and Kori were very serious about their suggestion, and decided to do what they asked, since he had already used his chakra to increase his durability a bit. The blonde soon felt his chakra flow through him, and the two women moved together to test him with another set of combined attacks from the two of them. Diana attacked with a rising kick to the head of the blonde, and when Naruto blocked the attack with his arm, she moved to strike with a punch to his chest, Naruto countered by Naruto as he flipped over Diana. Using his chakra to actually stick to Diana as he grabbed her shoulder with one hand used his foot to move Kori's punch to block her attack. He then landed behind Diana, who turned to attack him with a backhand strike to hit him. He quickly dodged the attack and landed a full palm strike into the woman's torso with his chakra increasing the power of the strike. Diana grunted from the impact as Naruto quickly ducked the incoming kick from Kori, and then moved to using his chakra to increase his speed a bit, and managed to avoid two more strikes from the Tamaranian, as he managed to move into the air and land a powerful dropping axe kick that she blocked. With both her arms. The blow had a good deal of power as the metal floor depressed a bit, as Naruto moved to using his chakra to stick to her, as he moved to grab her shoulders. This allowed him to have some traction as he got behind her to suddenly move down to throw Kori back to land on the ground. Naruto quickly turned to evade several attacks from Diana who grunted a bit at his evasion of her attacks, and he quickly ducked a punch, and used a sweep kick to force her back, which he used to launch himself at her to fire a kick at Diana which she blocked with her own arm. She was about to counter-attack, but he quickly launched a punch that she evaded and managed to kick Naruto hard in the chest. Naruto groaned at the impact but landed on his feet, and had to admit that the blow was pretty strong. But he got up and readied himself on the off chance he had to fight again, though it was clear that the fight was over as Kori and Diana began to relax a bit. Diana wondered if Naruto had used the full potential of his chakra in this fight, as she had felt something coming from him that was somehow connecting to her skin. But she decided to put an end to this fight. It seems that the fight is in the favor of both myself and Kori Hokage. Naruto grunted a bit, but he grinned, making Diana wonder why he was making such an expression. And Naruto spoke to the Amazon with a grin on his face, while rubbing the area she had hidden. I have to admit that the blow you gave hurt me Diana Hime, but that hardly means that I wasn't able to get a hit on you that can be considered a serious blow. Kori looked at Diana and pointed at her arm. Friend Diana. Look at your arm. She did so and saw that there was a cut there and a bruise as well, proof that the blow Naruto had used was a lot more powerful than she had expected. She had to admit that the battle had been so intense that she had not noticed the blow. She looked at Naruto who was rubbing the area where he had been hit while smiling a bit, and she gave him a nod of approval. It seems that the contest did not come with a victor as we both injured one another. I guess the match is a draw. Naruto nodded and replied with a rueful look. Yeah but damn you can really pack a hell of a hit Diana Hime. Still it was an amazing fight, if you ever came to my homeworld, I can easily bet you would make a name for yourself as a Kanoichi. Diana smiled as she checked her arm where the cotton slight bruise was, already her wounds healed at a good clip due to her inherent healing abilities. Normally being wounded by a man was a bad thing for an Amazon, but Diana had developed a level of respect for Naruto, and his skills were quite respectable. And the fact that he had grown up in a world where women were not only free to pursue their own interests, but have earned great renown and even led forces in battle as well as fight in battle, made her respect him a lot more. She knew that there might be some secrets Naruto may have, but then again the same could be said for her as well. She had not yet told the others that she had left her homeland without permission from her mother the queen, and no doubt she had made her people worry greatly due to her being gone. She mentally gave a sigh and hoped that she could be able to come back home and be able to mend fences with her mother and her sisters, when the time came. She turned to see Naruto looking at her wound intently, and she wondered what he was doing until he spoke. That wound's still hurting Diana Hime. A little, but I am healing well enough. I can speed it up if you want. Diana was surprised and so was Kori, and she was more than willing to ask how he planned to do that. How? Naruto sighed and began to summon his chakra, and soon a glowing nimbus of green chakra came out from his hands, and soon he moved to the scar. Diana was curious and was a bit surprised when she felt the chakra hit her wound, and it was not because it was bad to her senses. Instead it actually felt warm, gentle and calming to her, and she actually felt her flesh mend. Naruto soon moved his hands away, and she saw that any trace of the wound was all gone, as the glowing chakra faded from Naruto's hands. Kori was white-eyed as Diana was as she flexed her arm, and could see that what happened was no illusion at all, her arm was indeed fully healed. Soon Naruto grinned a bit as he saw their reaction, while well, he was hardly a fully skilled medic nin, nor was he the caliber of say Sakura and Sanade, nor did he have the skills of Hinata, he had learned enough on how to use healing chakra to deal with most wounds. But he usually let the real healers do the work, since he did have his highly potent life force, for he healing bit, along with Kurama's own potent chakra reserves, to speed up the whole thing, so they could use their talents on those who needed it. Plus he was not a full-fledged medic nin, and thus did not have the higher level knowledge of full medic nin. 
Still, having the skills certainly helped, and he was not the kind to forget anything that can spell the difference between victory or defeat. And Diana approved as she spoke. Impressive I did not know you were skilled as healer if I recall it right, you mentioned that there were ninja who were healers medic nin. Yep, I'm not a full-fledged medic nin, and thus I don't have the full skill set along with the other healing and curative techniques, but I at least have enough skills and experience to heal basic and some serious wounds. Diana nodded in approval at that as such a talent set was invaluable in her mind. She was all the more curious and asked more pointed questions about Charka, and she was not the only one as Cory was also very curious. In truth though, the line of conversation quickly made Naruto realize a few things, while it was true that he could sense Chakra and the others, he noted a large amount differences in their unique Chakra types as well. Superman Clark Kent's Chakra was different, and so were that of the others no doubt, due to being an alien and reliant on solar radiation from the Sun of Earth, though he did wonder why red sun radiation, whatever the hell that was, had the reverse effect on his powers. The others who had very unusual Chakra being that they were alien were obviously Coriander, Cher, and John with differences between the three. In fact the only ones who were human were Green Lantern, Batman, and Flash, though Flash had a slightly higher chakra pull, compared to the two which was possibly due to his accident that gave him powers. But he noted something odd about Diana's own chakra type. He had not gotten into serious details about it for now, since he had other matters to deal with. But now that he thought about it, he had sensed for some reason that Diana's chakra was like a fusion of normal chakra for living humans and nature chakra. That was surprising to him since the only times he had ever felt nature chakra in living beings were when he was in son in mode and when he tangled with the ten tails. The fact that Diana had it and a very unique variant and amount of said nature chakra was also rather interesting to the blonde as he had never felt this variant before. And it seemed to be part of her body's own network without draining easily and also be utterly harmless to Diana. In fact it seemed that this unique chakra was more beneficial to the princess in more ways than merely one. In fact, if he was to wager a guess, it might have to do with her healing ability, and it might mean that Diana's Amazons could have that same unique connection. That was more confusing to him since as far as he knew, no one practiced chakra here, and even if there was the possibility that the Amazons had some knowledge on it, as well as some way to train their sisters on how to harness nature chakra, then it would have made sense for Diana to have used it ever since she came here. The fact that she had not shown any signs of a user of nature chakra made him very curious how it was possible. It also made him wonder what would happen if she did get the training on how to use chakra sure she was not exactly at the right age like he was in the academy, but that unique chakra she had seemed to tell him otherwise. But that can wait now is not the time to think on this until I get to sample the nature chakra from her homeland. Whatever it is and how come she has an amount of it in her body naturally. The three of them continued the discussion with Diana and Cory, unaware of his thoughts for the moment, and once they were done, Diana decided to go and help with monitor duty. This naturally left Naruto alone with Cory. the two of them parted company, and as Naruto and Cory and her headed to take some food to eat after the spar. She decided to ask him if they could visit this place called the Beverly Center in LA, which she heard about, and was interested to see as she had not been to one yet. Naturally Naruto knew just what she was referring to and decided to do so. It was high time she got to be a regular woman having a day off from work. Though it would be plainly obvious that the definition of work between them would be very different from what normal people did for a living. Later in LA. Naruto sighed a bit as he was using his hench to disguise himself at least in terms of face, so he did not have his whisker marks. His eyes were now deep violet, and had made his normally spiky hair go down and be in a ponytail, while accompanying a disguised Cory around the city on what was her new outing. Sure no one knew he was Hokage, but he was not taking chances at this point in time. Cory had taken some time to convince to not go out in her hero outfit, and after some time, she finally consented to his request for her to be dressed. She finally decided wear simple clothing for this little excursion, which included a simple long-sleeved white shirt and comfortable jeans along with shoes, but like before. Even regular civilian clothing looked so damn enticing on the beautiful Tamaranian that it seemed almost pointless to try and hide her. And of course there was the fact that Cory being comfortable in her skin, despite agreeing to his request, was none too happy in being forced to wear clothing, but apparently her desire to learn more of Earth alongside Naruto was enough to make her agree to it. And it seemed that clothes were comfortable enough for her to accept them even more, which was a hell of a lot better than her regular outfit. And already there was a lot of eyes at Cory, mostly the male kind, and even some female kind, to which Naruto could not help but snicker it mentally to himself. Though to be perfectly honest with himself, he was just as guilty as the men were for staring at Cory. Only difference was, he has seen her naked more times than most. And he was sorely tempted to rub it in on more than one instance, that he was the only guy thus far she was willing to go in the nude for in his own house. But he decided not to, that was asking for trouble in more ways than one. At the moment, they were walking towards one of the known malls in Los Angeles, but she had wanted to see the place after seeing it on TV, and already her appearance was attracting all manner of attention. The Niner Malevolent. 
More than one person took pictures of Corey. Men stared at rather ogled. Women were jealously looking at her and giving their boyfriends and husbands the proverbial evil eye. And women who were into women, or both women and men, looked at her with great interest. None of which mattered much to Corey at the moment, as she was focused on looking at all she can see. Naruto was not far behind as some of the women were looking at him in interest, men were looking at him in annoyance due to the fact that their female companions were looking at him, and men who were more into men looked at him as well, much to his annoyance. Thankfully no one had tried to get into their personal space just yet, since he was not in the mood to get into a confrontation on his date with Cory. But he was no fool either, and knew that sooner or later, someone was going to try something very soon. But considering what he could do and what Cory could do when she was angry and boy what a terrifying sight and enraged Starfire was. He couldn't help but feel that whoever did get on Cory's nerves to the point she lost her temper was either had balls of titanium, or had little to no regard for his own well-being. The Tamaranian beauty soon went to what appeared to an ice cream shop, and looked at the various flavors, Naruto having tasted called Tree Kid growing up, enjoyed a treat like that every now and then. Though prior to the villagers and Ninja changing their views on him were usually either locking their doors to him, or raising the prices high enough that he could not buy any of them, unlike Aruka was with him or in the days prior to his death, Jiraiya. It was a different matter outside of Kanoha though so he enjoyed outings when he got ice cream. Here in this world on the other hand, it was obviously a far different matter altogether, and he had tried a number of flavors that he liked. He saw Cory look at one batch of ice cream, and silently prayed that his wallet would survive this. Hours later. And there goes half the month's accumulated salary man now once more I know how Ruka sensei feels every time he treated me out to ramen. But once he moved from looking at his now empty wallet to looking to see a blissfully happy Cory enjoying her fourth of seven pizzas, along with three nice orange eyes slushy made him rethink the feeling on his mind. But well, at least it was for a good cause. What was the reason for said thought coming from the blonde? Starfire had bought a number of things, namely clothing and a few other items that cost him a fairly hefty sum, coupled with the other things she bought, since she found them interesting. That was not counting the fact that he had to spend a fairly half sum for the ice cream that she ate, along with having to tolerate a large number of males who looked perversely at Cory licking her ice cream, not doubt imagining he knew what in their heads. Not that he was not guilty of that himself, but at least he was able to control himself, and had respect for Cory as he knew her story, and while she was more open with him, he knew it was only because he never took advantage of her. The day he took advantage of a woman was the day he would willingly allow himself to be killed by his enemies. Dot it seemed that regardless of race or in his case, dimension, shopping was hardwired into the mindset of women, either for comfort, or fashion, or both. Of course there were marked exceptions to that rule in his mind. Tenten Chan always preferring buying the latest weapons off the blacksmith than clothing considering all those weapon scrolls she had on her when I met her in the past. She always bought only clothes she felt comfortable with, and only bought dresses for special occasions. He smiled slightly in memory of his long deceased fellow Kanoha Ninja, and wondered just what she was doing now in the afterlife. He was so deep in thought on the matter that he had not noticed the look of concern coming from Cory until she touched him on the face. Are you alright friend Naruto? That woke him up from his current trip down memory lane, and his eyes widened on the fact that Cory had said his real name in public. He quickly looked about and was slightly pleased by the fact that no one was taken keen ear to have heard his name. Granted he wore a mask when being in his Hokage persona, but he was not keen on the idea of anyone figuring him out to be Hokage, since it was already made aware that he was usually with Starfire when they were out on patrol. He was also pleased that at least the people were making a lot of noise, so unless one of them had some serious equipment to pick up voices, then he was in the clear. He turned to face Cory and spoke. I am fine Cory chan but you know you're not supposed to use my real name when out in public remember? Oh? Sorry I forgot, but you were so quiet and I tried to call your attention, you did not respond so I was worried. On Tamarin, we are fairly open about talking about many things, so may I ask what troubles you and if I can help you? Naruto smiled at that and replied. No worries, just thinking about my old friends, they're long gone now. Cory gave a small nod and replied. I see, I am sorry for you. But she smiled and hugged him, unmindful of the fact that her doing so got groans of dismay and growls of anger from the men, and some from the women. Naruto on the other hand could not help but smile at her very friendly nature, and he could tell that her sudden show of affection was genuine, and at least no one had done anything that could be considered hostile to the two of them. Cory soon moved away and spoke to him earnestly. But I promise to be as good a friend to you as long as we are together. Naruto smiled at that, and soon they decided to get back to enjoying their little vacation. However, to their surprise, the crowds near them began to run away and scream. Briefly Naruto wondered if there was a sudden attack, but when he reached out with some of Kurama's chakra, he sensed none of the emotions that would denote an attack in people in danger. In fact, it was the exact polar opposite. They were happy and surprised, along with the usual emotions men had when seeing a woman who was drop-dead gorgeous. 
Naturally there were darker reactions from the ladies, and he wondered if a celebrity had just arrived, so he moved his chakra senses a bit further out to determine who it was. The very second he felt the chakra of the person the rest of them all were looking at he was surprised. She's here. Karama also sensed that in inside his partner's mindscape, the nine-tailed fox smirked in his own way and spoke. Oh yeah, this just got interesting. The very second the crowd parted, the rival turned out to be none other than Diana, the Miss Greer, or rather Wonder Woman. The blonde had no idea just what she was doing here, and how she found them, but he knew better than to complain for the time being, as the Amazon beauty looked around, unmindful of all the looks being sent in her direction. Though acknowledging to some extent the looks of desire from women who naturally in this case were more into women than men, though the blonde had no doubt there were women who were into both men and women admiring her. Corey turned and smiled warmly and without bothering to control herself, quickly flew towards Diana and landed there and hugged the raven-haired and blue-eyed Amazon beauty. Diana could tell the genuine happiness in the hug that Corey gave her, and responded in kind to her actions, as she hugged the Tamaranian princess in exile back. As soon as the hug ended, the Tamaranian was busy chatting away with her fellow Justice League member, and already the stares directed at the two beauties were getting a lot more intense. The reason being that Diana did not wear any form of disguise at all, so she was in her full gear, which was pretty darn distracting though compared to seeing her and Corey in both their uniforms, would have made the image of the two beauties hugging on another team. As soon as they parted from one another, the two walked back, and Diana knew that this was Naruto and what he called his hench. And she knew that since Naruto had a secret identity that only the others in the league knew about, she was not going to reveal that identity to the public. The public only knew him as the Hokage, but not as Naruto Uzumaki, and she respected that. Greetings, happy to see you here Hokage. Naruto nodded at that and replied in kind. Nice to see you as well Wonder Woman, what brings you here to Los Angeles? I figured seeing the city that you and Starfire protect when not in the league was in order, since I have to confess that staying in the watchtower was getting to rather dull. I hope you and Starfire do not mind my presence here. Naruto had no reason why he would not like her being here, and neither would Starfire as she spoke with a happy tone her voice as she was looking forward to having company with them here, and Diana being said company was more than welcome. Corey being the more vocal and open-hearted one of the bunch replied. It would be glorious to have you with us friend Wonder Woman. Naruto shrugged and nodded in approval while smiling, inside himself however, he could not help but feel like he was going to be in for another round of shopping. Thankfully he did always carry a spare envelope of money on his person, hidden away from sight. He only hoped that Diana did not have a shopping bug like Kori did. Thank the Kami that she is not as bad as Kori-chan. Naruto's relief was evident as Diana had only bought a small number of clothes that appealed to her, which was pretty interesting, since the clothing was not native to her. She did not go to the cosmetic section which was a good thing to the blonde for two reasons, the first was that some of the stuff being sold there cost a lot. And the second was the fact that she did not look like she needed to have any form of makeup hands the like, since she was gifted well with natural beauty. Any attempt to have her wear any of that stuff felt like it was both redundant and useless to his view, and apparently the same went for the Amazon herself, since she found no reason for her to have them in her purchases. Heck she even asked him why women would wear this to hide their beauty. Thankfully, having been married before his arrival here, and having taken care of his own daughters who had gotten married, he was able to answer her instead of acting like the proverbial deer caught in the headlights. Well, not every woman is born with perfect features like you, so they use these to attract a man. Why would they do that? It's something that happens a lot here than in Themyscira Wonder Woman, so it's considered natural here, and since men and women do have children here in man's world, it's what one would expect. Is all of this to attract men necessary? Depends on the viewpoint of the woman I guess, it's best to not forget that not all men are as bad as you might have heard, and there are women who can be considered bad or worse as well. Humanity is a mixed bag of people, so it's best to learn to look at all things on both sides than just one. I see. Naruto grinned and replied. And besides, you've already met a number of men already that can show you that not all men are like those your tutors describe. That was not going to be the end of the conversation in his view, since Diana was still getting used to living in the world where men were as plentiful as women. And no doubt she would hold on to her trained cultural views, but if there was one thing he learned in his long years of being alive, times and things can change. Diana would soon learn that while some of the things her mentors taught her about men were true, not everything was true and that at times, women can be just as dangerous or worse than the men. But that could wait for now as they were still making the most of the day before them. An interesting factor in this new and unexpected shopping trip was the fact that a lot of the people manning the places that the Amazon had bought in were willing to lower prices due to the fact that they were dealing with Wonder Woman of the Justice League and did the same for Starfire. They also did the same to a lesser extent to him, though it was obvious that the ladies were the ones getting the better treatment. Not that it bothered him that much, though he was very sure that he was going to have to work double time for getting his cash reserves back into good shape. The good thing at least was that no one was. Don't finish that train of thought kit, you know what happens whenever you think that. 
Naruto mentally groaned at that as he recalled that whenever he thought things would not get any worse, they usually did. Unfortunately his worries were realized when the three heroes of the League heard shouting and panicking nearby. Naruto quickly used his Senjutsu Chakra to try and find out just what was going on, and soon felt an undercurrent of panic. He soon sensed six signatures of people with hostile intent in the mall, and he quickly turned to the two super heroines. We got trouble come on. The two nodded and despite the fact she was wearing civilian clothes, Kori took to the air alongside Diana, as Naruto quickly moved forward to get somewhere safe to change clothing right away. He carried a spare set of his Hokage clothing and armor in a seal scroll, and he was going to find a place to get into gear. He wanted to avoid the cameras in the place, since the last thing he wanted was to have his mug without the mask all over the place, even if he was in Henge. Thankfully no one was going to stop him as he quickly got into an area not easily watched by the cameras, and quickly got dressed. He soon donned his full armor and mask, moved back to join the two female heroes to find out what was going. They did not have to wait long to get their answer on what was going on. Before them happened to be a large number of armed thugs, carrying assault rifles and hoods, the way these guys moved showed that they were not regular hoods. And the fact that they got body armor on only made that fact a lot more apparent than most, and he would have Togo all out. But he had a feeling that this was not going to go the way the gang envisioned their little robbery attempt. And it was. The very second one of the thugs turned to their direction, Cory came in and landed one hell of a flying kick to send the man flying backwards. One of the guys armed with a shotgun, turned to shoot at Cory, only for Diana to come in with her lasso to hold him down and yanked him towards her. For her to land a real haymaker on his face. Cowards. Fight with honor. Diana obviously was not keen on fighting people who used what she felt was cowardly weapons, but at least she was aware not to take chances, as the thugs turned to shoot at her. She used the bullets and bracers bit and sent the bullets away as he came to her side. Wonder Woman, we need to make sure those bullets don't go flying about and hit innocent bystanders. Understood. Diana did just that as she sent the bullets away in different angles that made sure to avoid civilians, while Naruto quickly took out a spare of shuriken and tossed them into the guns of two of the thugs, causing them to jam up on contact. That was the opening he needed as he charged in and quickly landed a punch and kick combination to the two, before leaping upwards to land a combined kick to their faces, and using their falling bodies as springboards to leap over another shooter, and then kicked him to his knees before landing a knee strike of his own into the face to send the guy out. Another thug shouted as he turned to shoot Naruto. Die you freak. That however enraged a certain Tamaranian beauty as she charged in and then took the gun from the man. And before his eyes she broke it into nothing but useless halves. Do not dare call my friend a freak. The man saw the enraged look on the beauty's face, and Nai pissed himself when she summoned her energy and landed a fist to his face. Thankfully his head did not blow up like a rotten melon on impact. But it was a fact that he was going to be drinking from a straw for the next few months. The guy was out like a light, and soon the three faced the thugs, as Naruto drew his sword and had a kunai at the ready, Diana cracked her knuckles a bit, and readied her lasso, while Kori charged up a pair of powerful green starbolts at the ready. The thugs realizing how outmatched they were did the only thing reasonable. They dropped their guns. Later, Naruto sighed as he, Diana, and Kori watched the thugs being dragged off to be arrested, and soon the police got the sworn statements of the witnesses and the three league members in question. He was not pleased by the outcome of the whole day, but at least he was pleased that no one had been hurt, and when things seemed to calm down, he faced both Diana and Coriander. Sorry about this, the whole day was ruined. Kori shook her head and replied with a warm smile on her face. No worries about that one friend Hokage, I enjoyed this day immensely. Diana also nodded and spoke to the blonde ninja. I am not disappointed, this was an interesting experience, at any rate I should head back, it's my turn to take over for John after all. I'll make sure to store these away. They bid Diana farewell, and soon the two headed off on their own, unaware that they had observers on the two of them as well as Diana. And the observers belonged to three different groups, and neither of them were aware of one another. Naruto would have sensed them and their intent had it not been for two things. One he was busy being pestered by the media again. And the second was after he finally convinced them to leave, Kori dropped a message to him. Apparently someone from one of the clothing brand's stores in the mall, had decided to take the initiative and. She asked you to be a model. Yes friend Hokage. Isn't that exciting? Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.